I never cheat, but I'm often looking for more efficient ways to build parts and pieces of the quilts here in the studio. Today's video is all about some of my secret steps to successful strip sewing. Let's get started. That's right, everybody. Welcome back to Making It Fun. I am your host, Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, and I'm super excited to see all of you out there. Now, today's video is more of a skill builder video than an actual quilt building video. But like I was saying in the introduction, there are some really cool tricks for making quilt blocks or quilt units, parts and pieces for your project that you can actually start with strips. For example, this quilt here, if you haven't seen my variegated version of the modified Three Dudes, which was actually... Um, Raymond Steve's pattern from the Three Dudes Quilt Shop out in Arizona. I believe it was called the Strip Surprise. Uh, I did it years ago and modified it, called it the Three Dudes. But long story short, I put up this video and I was featuring in that video how to use these really cool variegated or ombre boarded from the quintessential line from Michael Miller Fabrics. And it was a great video and I'll have that link at the back end of this video for all of you. But today we're talking about secrets and, and tips and tricks to making your strip sewing more successful. Um, we're gonna break down some of those barriers. I'm gonna teach you that you don't have to go up one direction and back down the other, which saves fabric and a bunch of these things. But I wanted to use print so that you could also really follow and see that we're doing all of this obviously right sides together. But in this video, I was using solids and sometimes that can be a little tricky, especially for our brand new quilters that are out there. And this is why we do these videos, to welcome all of you to our community and yeah, get you hooked on the habit is really what's going on. So let me introduce you to this fabulous new line from Michael Miller Fabrics. It started shipping a couple of weeks ago to your local quilt shops, your online retailers. It's called La Vida Loca and it is awesome. It is one of our hottest sellers, which means it'll be easier for you to find in a lot of your quilt shops out there. That's one of the questions we get here at Making It Fun often. So I'm just going to quickly flash some of these wonderful fabrics, some of the theme fabrics, our sugar skulls in a couple different colorways. I love this print with the guitars and the frames of the cactus and the donkey on it. And I think maybe Carmen Miranda there. How cool is that? The llamas, the stripe. We've got some like tattoo heart coordinate. I just, again, I love all of this kind of stuff. I want to use this really cool cactus print today. And if you stick with me and keep watching the videos, I'm going to come back and do something else with our big theme fabrics. But I wanted to show you this awesome cactus print. I want to use this today because the strips we're going to be using aren't going to be real wide. So I want kind of a medium to small print to start with. This is one of the ones we're going to use. Okay. I want this as a coordinate because I love the way the colors pull together. And uh, let me just flash a couple of these last. Like I said, these will be back in other videos very soon for you to all see and enjoy our La Vida Loca collection. But I'm going to, whoa, tear apart the set here while I'm going ahead and slide this stuff over and out of our way. Oh. If that could only been intentional. You hear the lens cap still rolling around over there? <laughs> Genius. Okay, and then I also wanted to use uh, one of our traditional, our basics, like we normally use it, making it fun. This is the Michael Miller marble fabric. And the reason I'm using this, not only do the colors look fabulous together, of course, but I wanted to show you that a lot of times when you take stuff out of your stash, it's been sitting around for a while, and, and maybe it looks like it's got a really great cut to just get started. But step number one for secrets to successful strip sew is to slow down. What? And, and there's a quick follow-up number two step, which is we're going to start by pressing everything straight out of the quilt shop, straight out of the stash. We want to go ahead and take our fabrics apart. We want to come on over here, get our iron turned on nice and hot. If you're a steam kind of person, go ahead. If you're a pre-washer, well, that's a lot of work. But it's not a bad idea. And you're probably more accustomed to this than I am because I'm not a pre-washer, uh, meaning that I don't take my fabrics, my yards straight from the local quilt shop and or my stash and, and, and throw it in the washer dryer. What I do is I, I bring it home. I don't wash it. Um, but before I start cutting into it and using it most of the time, and I really should do this more often, I'm going to take the time to press it. I'm going to get all of these wrinkles out. I'm going to get it nice and flat. I'm going to get all the loose threads off of it. And one of the things, if you haven't heard me say it, now I didn't make this up. But I did learn it and I do believe it, that fabric has memory. So you can see some of these heavy creases and whatnot in the marble fabric. And right now, as I go ahead and just drift my iron over here, I'm applying a little bit of steam and a little bit of heat. Of course, it's an iron. That's what it does. And then I'm going to leave the fabric to rest. It's just going to sit here 
because I want it to go into a nice, flat, cool state, and that way all of the fibers, it's kind of like uh, blocking your quilt, or if you're doing uh, yarn work, uh, weaving work, like blocking your weaving, basically getting it a little bit hot, a little bit damp, and then letting it sit till it's cool so that the memory of the weave goes back and stays nice and straight and nice and flat. And if you're really sold on this method, it's probably better to go ahead and iron the next piece on top of the first piece than it is to move this, because that is still warm, which means it could go back to that wrinkly, not so pretty state. Now, we're talking about pressing. We are talking about steps to success. So I'm not gonna press this actually with that crease in it either. This is straight off the bolt, straight out of your quilt shop. So I'm gonna now open it up selvage to selvage and do the same thing. Now we don't need tons of it, so I'm not gonna press the whole darn thing today. That wouldn't be efficient, but I wanna make a few strips. And so I do wanna go ahead and press a couple inches worth. And what I'll do, is I'll show you again a quick lesson on how to construct strips that will work into this and I'll even take you all the way through the half square triangle at the end. But we start with our strip sewing and there's a couple reasons that getting it nice and organized is really important. Nice and, um, what am I trying to say? Flat, smooth, successful. Let's get that last color. And like I said, step one, slow down. Normally I'd have half the quilt built by now, but we're slowing down. Opening it up, selvage to selvage, and you can see those creases or wrinkles as they go across there. And again, we're just gonna press, gliding that iron. Maybe you wanna give it a little steam. That's gonna get it hotter. It's gonna help the wrinkles come out, but it will then have to sit here longer because it needs to come back to its cool state. So we're gonna, do that. We're just going to let it go back to its cool state. Time in this. Ah, long enough. Okay. So now let's Make sure our space is clear and ready to go. We don't want to have any problems. These are the sides I'm working from. So now as I come back in here, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to fold it. I like my selvages to line up. So I'm just kind of making sure that edge down there looking nice and crisp. That's the other reason I take the fold out because sometimes the fold isn't perfect in the spot you want to be working. Okay, so we're going to set that one over. Now, as I'm grabbing the marble fabric, I did, like I pointed out, I had already been cutting from this. And so a lot of us will, you know, just kind of go, oh, great. Well, I'm going to take the time and I'm going to go ahead and lay and just line up the last cut that I made. And boy, that sure looks pretty good. And I could probably just lay right into that. But now as I look at my selvage, I don't know if you can tell or not, but they're running kind of sideways, which means that I might get more uh, shift or torque or pull or wobble in my seam. So if I really, cause we're, we're trying to, you know, if you've made garments, you always were talking about keeping the grain line straight with your pattern. So with quilting, that really can help, especially in your early years. So now as I actually line up my selvages down here, look at this, you can see across there, that cut is not okay. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and shave off the least amount of this because I want to make a bunch of little skinny strips of this. So now as I do that, I'm going to come up here and as I get ready, because I have now set that fold, I'm looking at the lines on my ruler across the fold. Then I'm going to start to scoot it back to that corner right there to make it efficient. First one. Okay. Now step or, or trick number two, secret number two, is when you get ready to cut, a lot of times you're gonna be cutting a really long strip. So this has two steps within this secret alone, okay? First step is don't fold, 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 fold until it's like a little four inch strip and try to cut it with one of these smaller, shorter rulers. These are great for smaller, shorter projects. We're not doing that right now. We're doing a 45 inch strip of fabric. I'm gonna make this one and a half 
inches so that we have a nice one inch reveal showing when we're done. And so if I fold it too many times, what can happen is you're gonna get creases. And if you've ever seen it, there's like this little hourglass shape that is made where the fold is because the folds will cause the fabric to do different things. So right now I have a single fold right up here. That's okay, but I don't have two, three, or four folds in this one single layer of fabric. So step 2A, we were on slow down, then we moved into accuracy in our cutting, one fold if you can. Two folds if you have to, but let's try to stick with one fold. Second strip is you notice I keep, or trick is I keep grabbing up here on my ruler. How many of you have had this happen? As you start to cut in to your fabric, the whole ruler starts to shift one way or the other. There's a couple of things you can do for yourself. One is you might want to put on your heels today, okay? So if you're taller, you're going to have more downward pressure, a further reach, you're going to be able to get closer to the top of your ruler. You'll notice it's the top of the ruler that shifts. It's not the bottom it, because it's the way that we start to put our pressure as we get away from our body, okay? It's body mechanics that cause that. So bring your work in close to you, keep it in near your waistline, okay? I want you to make sure everything is square here. That's gonna give us a good cut. But now with my body mechanics, as I go to reach onto this big ruler, I want my hand to land up near the top, not near the bottom at least in the middle. But if I can hold that last third of the ruler, I'm not gonna cause my ruler to veer. Now I'm gonna come down in here and I'm gonna start. I'm gonna put nice pressure all the way through. I'm gonna peel that back to check that I got it all off on the first cut. And now I've got a really nice, really true line that should be 90 degrees off the fold, straight up, both pieces and our selvage is lined up, which means our grain line should be good. I think we're getting somewhere, folks. Now, maybe there's a step C to this cutting portion of it. I rotated the fabric. I'm pretty right-handed. I can cut with my left hand, but I'm better if I always cut with the rotary cutter in the right hand itself. So that's the next thing is let's make sure that we're making good workspace. We're making good body mechanics. Like I said, you might need to be taller. You might need to stand on a stool or use a shorter table. Some of these things are very um, effective. Now, the next thing we wanted to do, like I said, I want to cut a one and a half inch strip. I want to cut a bunch of them. So I'm going to come on over here. And now the next trick is because I can't use the fold down here. I only have one and a half inches. It's not trustworthy. It's too short. But if I use this whole line across here that I first cut, that's why it's clean, that's where it is. Now I'm gonna come up here, put that pressure in that last third of the ruler I put through here. And I've actually got a pretty good amount of pressure down here. And this is another trick I learned. And this is for all cutting, not just strips. But you'll notice I'm starting to put my finger out the ruler, or the, excuse me, the cutter. I've been taught that that's going to help with tendonitis over the time. I don't know, but I certainly cut a lot of fabric and I do feel it at the end of the day sometimes. Okay, did we get a nice cut? We did, fantastic. Let's set this aside. We're gonna need four of those strips. So let's just blast those out really quick. Slowly, quickly, kind of thing. Okay, so now I have four of these wonderful strips like this, one and a half inches wide. Perfect. Now what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and get myself a few more two and a half inch wide strips, okay? So as we come over here, it's gonna be the same exact technique. Let me fold this over so you can already see that I have not a perfectly square cut, So we're gonna do the same thing, whether it's off the bolt, out of here stash, I'm already starting backwards, you saw it, I know. I'm thinking about what to say, not how to cut. We gotta square it up first. We're gonna true it up first. And I didn't do it on the purple fabric, the marble, but I'm gonna do it now. I like to have the fold at my lap. I can actually see it better. And so therefore I actually have the fold in my lap. Selvages are lined up, I'm lining up that square edge. I'm making sure I'm trimming all the way through both pieces of fabric. At the end, we've got ourselves one more great cut. Out of that goes. Perfect here. So for the fun of this, like I said, we're gonna do some two and a half inch strips. Now, checking my ruler, watching this line over here. Oh, isn't that interesting? Something looks like it's gone wrong. Maybe I wasn't paying attention, but what I'm seeing right now, and I'm pretty sure you can't see this, 
as I look down the line, the fabric's doing this. So I either didn't cut it straight or when I landed, it didn't land straight. So first of all, real quick, I'm just gonna take, I move the fabric, I'm gonna double check. Two and a half inches, pretty sure the line is still straight on my ruler. Oh, that fixed it just like that. I thought I had done a good job cutting, so when I moved it over, I must have warped it. So again, I'm not forcing the fabric into a straight line, but that didn't look right, so I'm taking the time to make it nice and flat, nice and straight as we get ready to cut. Four of the two and a half strips of our cacti. Oh, another point. I'm so glad you're still here and paying attention. I started going too fast. And down over here, you can't necessarily see it, but there's a little bit of a fold. So, there was a fold down here at the corner. What that does, if you've never seen it, if you've never made a cut in fabric before, you, it's like serrated, right? It's, if there's a fold over a fold, when you cut it, it makes this weird jag, and then you go back and you're like, oh, I don't need a ruler to cut, I'll just trim it off. No, nope, makes it not straight. You don't want to do that. We want everything as straight as possible because this straight line here is what makes the straight happen over here at the presser foot, right? So let's go ahead and just go ahead and cut these down. One last one. Okay, awesome. And because we can, we're gonna make one of the wonderful pink. This will be our center strip, okay? And because I want the fold in my lap, I want my selvages lined up. You'll notice I'm checking the first two steps we did over and over again. I'm gonna go ahead and line up this line down here first. Now look, folks, I've over pushed the ruler. So I wanna slide it back, right? I wanna just get this lined up super nice, making sure that I'm cutting as little as necessary off, but I'm cutting, again, through both pieces of fabric. There's nothing more um, frustrating than, than thinking you've cut both pieces and one piece wasn't quite cut. And so what's gonna happen is that strip's gonna be more narrow technically. And as you sew your strips on, you're doing such a good job sewing it. But when you're done, there's this weird section that doesn't mathematically line up with everything else. And you did such a good job and you blame yourself and you're thinking about, I'm gonna take, I'm giving up sewing. I'm gonna take up, I don't know, archery or something. And, and so at the end of the day, uh, it's not always our fault. Sometimes it can be, <laughs> Bad instructors. Okay, here we go. Last one. Another two and a half, please. We're going to put this one right down the center. It'll be fun. Oh, heck, let's make it unique. Let's make it two. Not that it really will show that much, but let's make this one a two inch cut. I'm uh, obviously designing this as we go. It's gonna be similar to this one, but different, because if you saw this one, that one was different than the one before it that was similar. So you'll wanna watch both of those videos, of course. Okay, I'm goofing off. And this was a sewing video, and now we're getting into talking so much. Okay, layout for this. We're gonna do our two inch strip. We're gonna border it with two of our two and a half inch strips. And then what I want you to do is do a one inch. Excuse me, these were one and a half. One and a half here. We're gonna finish this out with that, that, and then one more out there, one more out there, and that is gonna be our strip set row when it is all done. Cool thing is, you're gonna have a bunch of chances to practice my sewing techniques. Now, I started to say it earlier at the beginning of the video, we are not gonna be practicing going up one direction and down the other. The next thing I want you to start to learn how to do with me here today is I want you to learn how to sew all of your strips from the same side so that that way when we're done, especially if you're using a lot of different fabrics. Of course, you know I'm here, I'm a I'm an employee of Michael Miller Fabrics. I love the fabric. It was some of the first fabrics I used as I was starting my quilting career. And I've been so blessed to grow all the way into a team member at Michael Miller. So yes, I use all Michael Miller. So my goods are more standardized, but you're quilters out there, which means you have Michael Miller and you have other brands of fabric in your stash, right? Which means they're not always the same length. And that can cause some frustrations if you're working on patterns that require that you have very little waste. So with this pattern here, we're gonna dive in now uh, to the sewing process, and there's a couple of things we're gonna do. Before we go any further into the fabric, let's talk about the machine, okay? So as I come over here to the machine, 
Standard sewing machines are set with a two and a half millimeter stitch length. Uh, it used to be 12 stitches to the inch when we were doing it all in standard measure. Now we're in metric. Okay, so on this particular machine, what I want to do is I want to take mine from a 2.4 down to a 2.0 stitch length. So the shorter the stitch, the less the feed dogs are moving with every stitch. I learned this sewing triangles together for the bias when you don't want wiggle in your bias or stretch in your bias, but the same thing works fabulously for your strip sewing, right? Is we don't want to be over pulling our fabric. We don't want to be stitching too fast. We don't want to be pulling on our fabric. We don't want to be water skiing behind the sewing machine. We want to let these little feed dogs do their job and pull the fabric through evenly under the needle at the right pace. If you haven't cleaned out your feed dogs, stop what you're doing right now and clean out your feed dogs on your sewing machine. That's going to help everything travel better. Remember, this is all about secrets to successful strip sewing, and that's going to really help there, okay? As we look at our strips, one of the things is we often have the habit of, as we grab our two fabrics, and I'm going to line them up selvage to selvage, right sides together. As I go to the machine, my natural tendency is to sew just like this, and now I'm looking at piece number one upside down on top of piece number two. If I keep doing this, it's not going to work so that the fabric feeds its, the body of the project comes out of the machine. It's all going to start to wad up over here on this side of the machine, which we don't want if we're doing other larger, more pieces, more strips. So my rule is, as I'm looking at my strips, whenever I get ready to go to the sewing machine, I'm always looking at the next piece. That's just what I hear in my head is, are you looking at the next piece or the add-on piece? And that gets a lot easier as we get over into pieces five, six, seven, right? Because you have the body on the machine and now you're just adding pieces. It's really tricky and it took me 12 years to figure out what was really happening. What I want you to hear, what I want you to do is like I said, looking at the next piece. So if you're starting with pieces one and two, here's a quick quiz for you. What is the next piece? You're right, it's piece two, it's not piece one. So as I get ready to sew these together, again, let me just put selvages to selvage, right? Right sides together. But as I go into the machine, I wanna be looking at piece two. That's gonna be hard for me to see. So now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna rotate it all the way around one more time, selvage to selvage, it's lined up. And now we approach the sewing machine. You saw the last step, which was we were using a two uh, millimeter stitch length instead of a 2.4, 2.5. And now as I'm sewing through here, can you see the little purple threads hanging out underneath the white fabric? I'm hoping you can, because I am using an edge guide, which means that my stitch width should be consistent. My fabrics are pushed up against there. I've got a really nice medium pace. You can see I'm not pulling, I'm not doing anything. Every now and again, I am standing on the strip, but that's because I'm trying to impress all of you while standing and sewing and I've got cameras and lights everywhere and stuff. Normally you're seated, you're sewing, you're just drinking wine and listening to rock and roll and making quilts, right? So at any rate, we are, um, or coffee if you're like me, uh, and we're just gonna take this nice and slow, nice and easy. Point is I'm looking at both colors of fabric. I know they're both right there. That's gonna keep an efficient uh, seam allowance very nicely. using my left hand over here, well, I was, to make sure the fabric stays lined up. I'm using my right hand down here just to make sure that there's no resistance on the fabric. I'm keeping it just slightly off the table so it feeds through nicely until it gets so small that it really won't make any matter. And here we're just gonna go ahead and stitch all the way through here. Now, as I come out of the sewing machine though, I want to be pressing um, into that next strip as well. So again, the purple is piece two, and the, um, excuse me, the purple is piece one, the green is piece two. So I'm gonna go ahead and press now up into that as well. I'll let the iron get cool. Looks like we'll be taking another nap. I gotta let that get hot too. Think I, you think I, all right, hot enough. Let's just get this done. Now, so I was starting to say, we're going to press from piece one into piece two so that we can continually piece 
press into our new pieces as well as we go. One of the tricks I learned a million years ago is I'm just kind of lightly holding up the um, top piece of fabric as I'm gliding the iron across there. And that kind of sets the seam. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and gently push over. And that, in my best opinion, really helps get the fabric up taut against the thread as much as possible, the thread that was used to put that seam together. So I'm not distorting it, I'm not tweaking it, I'm not pulling and I'm pushing on it. I did a really cool video recently that was kind of the basics of the nine patch and we did some strip sewing in that. That's what got me motivated to do this video for all of you because there was a lot of really cool feedback and comments on that video about different ways for strip sewing. I even noticed one of the comments and I think it's a really cool idea person had noticed um, drawing lines on their on their um, ironing surface so they could iron and if they had to kind of block their strips uh, for real accuracy, I thought that could be a really a neat idea, especially if you have a nice big board like that. So thought I would point that out that yes, I do read the comments. I do appreciate all of you out there entering in your feedback and your opinions and your ideas. It's how we all learn together. This sewing community is so great. Yeah, you busted me. I was letting it cool down so that it would stay straight. You know it. It's part of the part. That was the first step. How can I not teach and then not do it? Okay, moving on. We're going to now sew on. Remember, this looks like this in the project. I'm handling it like this now because this is where I'm going to feed it into the top of the machine. And this is that seam. This is our starting point. And again, I'll show you why that's so important, but I got to get all these seams sewn together first. So now that we're doing that, let's go ahead and take our other strip. And now look at this. This is piece two. Remember, one, two, piece three goes on top. Line up this selvage down here so that as we build and build, we have one really easy trim line up top and the rest is gravy. So now at this point, there's nothing new to learn in the strip sewing. We're just gonna go ahead, same exact thing. We're gonna do some nice edge guide work. I'm looking at both pieces of fabric. Now I can see just the slightest color, like a thread's worth poking out underneath again. A nice slow, a nice even pace. And I'm gonna sew all the way through this strip set from that end to this end, so not up and back, not up and back like grandmother taught us. Okay, last reminder is I'm not pushing the fabric into the machine, I'm not pulling the fabric back from the machine, I'm letting my left hand steer, I'm letting my right hand remove the friction or drag on the way to the fabric, and that will become more and more important as the fabric gets heavier and heavier. And then the last thing, the new thing I'll point out before I disappear and come back with all of this stitched together is, I always like to try to keep it the heaviest weight of the fabric on the feed dogs themselves. And I mentioned to have them clean earlier, the feed dogs move the fabric. And so yes, in the first strip, I had the skinny strip on the feed dogs, the wide strip up, but they were equal kind of. Now I have more strips down than up and this will just keep building and building out of the machine like this. Let's cut that thread. Bring it back to the ironing board and I'm just gonna do this process over and over until all of those strips are connected. Bring it back in, lay it nice and flat. Hold that fabric right up in the air, the first one. Gently lifting, setting the thread, setting the fabric up against the thread. Now we're gonna push it over. And I think you can see how nice and parallel those seams are looking, which is our first kind of check to make sure we're doing it right. So let me go ahead and continually sew on these pieces. And like I said, I'll be right back in just a few moments with everything stitched together. And I'll show you how we can have some fun, create that up as a little bit of a bonus. And you then can take off in your own sewing room and practice your secrets to successful strip sewing. I got to think that through every time I say it. Last strip just went on. Looks pretty dang good if you ask me. Let's go ahead and press this out. Same way we've been doing the whole time. Pressing up into that next strip or the last strip, the strip you were just handling. And now I'll walk you through the trick to making these really cool looking blocks 
Focus your eye on the purple right now. That's what becomes the black in this quilt behind you. Um, of course, I did the center with a single strip. The original had three strips in the middle, and there was a little bit of a math challenge, which actually started getting me very concerned about how people strip sew. So years ago is what kind of started the seed that grew into today's video. So this particular thing, we're gonna to wanna to make squares out of it now so we can play with this project. And normally if you're following this project, you would actually make two identical strip set rows so you can make six total squares. Originally, the math was so wide this way, you didn't quite have enough this way, especially if you piece going one direction and down the other, because this side right now, mm-hmm, clean, easy to cut. This side over here, not as much, a little bit more of a stair step. And you can even see, look kids, that one right there, I was starting to feel a little rushed. So I punched it, I hit the gas on two strips over here on the machine when you weren't looking, and I started to stretch the fabric a little bit and it made it a little bit longer. Not terrible, but it still certainly does do what I said it would do. So at any rate, strip sets here. Next step we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this edge off. We want to do that by taking our ruler, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that line, I'm looking at that line, I'm looking at that line, I'm looking at this line, everywhere across here, and then I'm going to cut so that I have no selvage, no white, no nada in my first block. Okay, so first slice right through here, and I've got a really nice crisp cut. We need to now know how tall this is, and we all seem to have a different quarter inch size, so that means that your size and my size might be different. So you're gonna to need to measure if you're following the info to make that particular pattern. I, measuring up here, and I am landing literally, let me put my head in there in the way and get everything there, 13 and a half. And that's great because if you get over 14, 14 and 14 is 28. You add another 14 on that, and I think we're at like 42, and that's where that can be a little dicey. So I'm gonna measure this, uh, double we'll check in, measure twice, cut once, like we always do here at Making It Fun, 13 and a half. And now what I wanna do is I wanna rotate this down a couple of ways. I could use the lines on the um, table, I have a big square over here that's 13 and a half, and that's really what we should do. So let me take a moment, because if we're talking about secrets to successful sewing, the right tool for the job is one of those, right? Now, um, probably should check to make sure both rulers are the exact same marks, but I'm not saying that out loud. Okay, 13 and a half over here, and watching the lines, making sure everything is still nice and crisp, nothing shifted around in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut one of these at 13 and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and move some of this stuff out of the way. I'm feeling very disorganized today. Does it look that way? Pro yes. <laughs> That's your question for the comments below. Does it look as disorganized as I feel today? It's what happens when you make up the video while you're filming it. 13 and a half over here, 13 and a half over there. All my lines are lining up nice. And if you ever needed to kind of cheat, because what am I looking at here that makes me want to do that? I've got a line that goes here, a, a line that looks good in here, and then things started to get kind of sloppy. So I want to just stop. Drop the ruler back down at the 13 and a half mark. Let's really look at that. And I can just pull this bottom if I have to a little. With so many different seams and so much different grain, things start to flex around, okay? So 13 and a half again. I've cut my second. And just so that you would know, here you can see we have plenty for the third. And if these had gotten wider or if I hadn't shortened that strip a little bit, it can be a little dicey. So just a quick little reminder. Originally, I had used two and a half inch strips in the original pattern. I went down to two today to that just to make sure we had plenty. That's the other side. But for this step and then we're out for the day, I just need to show you how to make these awesome half square triangles with those stripes running through them. I know you can't even see them yet, can you? Okay, so I need you to take one of your squares as it stands like this with these stripes running. I'm going to call it horizontal right sides up. I'm going to take this particular 
square right now with the stripes running vertical up and down, right sides together. I'm going to drop them on top of each other and we are gonna now sew these together all four sides. So I'm gonna come over here. This is gonna be the easiest side to start on because my seams are heading downhill and the piece underneath is a solid strip. So I'm gonna stitch on a quarter inch seam. Watching those edges, making sure everything's coming together real nice. Looking for that other color, sticking out the edge just slightly. And now what I'm gonna do, just like it's Monday night softball, as we get near this corner, I'm gonna ask you to just to run through it like it's first base, you got your base hit and drop your needle and stop, okay? Now I'm gonna pivot. So I'm not trying to pivot at the quarter. I'm gonna go all the way off and all the way back on at the quarter inch. So yes, we just sewed that corner completely closed. Now on this side, your seams are on the underside and they're facing that away. So it could be a little tricky. So if you feel it getting caught on anything, you can kind of lift up as they go in. That'll be the tough side. And again, another base hit. So right through that first baseline. Stop, drop your needle, pivot. Make sure that everything's lined up out here on this outside edge again. Use your finger to push those seams down if you need to, or a stiletto works even better, and you don't risk bleeding all over your project that way. And as I come into this last corner here, excuse me, that third corner, another base hit. So we have three runners, first, second, and third, rotated out there. And now I've got this trick I started doing because I teach this project so much. On the last seam, I'm actually now kind of giving a little extra pressure down here in this first corner. And for whatever reason, that just seems to keep everything from going no pucker at the end. Beautiful. And I want you to run right through first base again, which brings a runner home. This is fantastic. And we now have a small problem because I just sewed all four sides closed. Kidding! No, that's part of the project. What I want you to do now is we're gonna dog ear our corner. So just gently, we're gonna take off. The threads have crossed. I want you to leave the cross, but take the rest of the corner out because that's just bulk we don't want there later. And now once that is done like that, okay, I want you to take your ruler, make sure you've got a good working space my stuff's gonna be in my way, I can already tell. Because I wanna lay my ruler right where the threads have crossed. So I've got a thread cross here, I've got a thread cross there. I'm gonna cut this through and don't move anything, okay? Flip it over, set that ruler again through the crosses of the threads in the opposite diagonal, move your body so you're still being safe and efficient. Remember that trick earlier, putting pressure down on the ruler, do it again, all the way through. And I missed the thread, but only one. Okay, so look, boom, there's those blocks, just like this that you saw up on the wall. Pretty cool, right? We can take a second, hit them with the iron. So I like to hold these up and press into that um, straight seam, the purple fabric right now. Okay, and now just a quick to show you the way they're gonna come together here. Just bring in all of those pink centers to touch. 
And there you have that block. That block again, kind of, yes, it's the same. It just looks different because of the fabrics and the choices of the widths and all of that. That was variegated, but technically this will do it. You also have these really cool little pink parts out there. So on the other side, these will come in and form like a square in a square. That one was, the seams are heading the wrong. But I think you can still see that right in there if I were to press those down. That's the other uh, block that you're seeing right there on that awesome quilt. Super simple, super easy, and I know a super long video that was supposed to just be quick, simple sewing techniques or strategies, secrets to strip sewing, and I'm so glad you were here today. Hope you learned something, and we'll see you very soon with another video right here at Making It Fun. Wow, you are still there. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of the video. <laughs> I know, I get a little long-winded sometimes. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you check out a few of the other ones we've created. I think they're terrific. And of course, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the little bell to be notified. I don't want you to miss a moment of the fun. Stay safe and happy sewing.